Good morning, guys. Good morning, citizens of the world. Hi, hello. My name is EJ, and I am back again with another narrated or time lapse video for us to look at and, you know, uh, talk about the art process. Uh, today, it's going to be very, very interesting, mainly because A, I'm posting 3D. Um, if you've watched me in my channel, uh, you know that I do 3D every now and then. Um, my main, main, um, practice, it revolves around 2D, obviously. I love painting more than sculpting. Um, but I do on occasion, uh, do a little bit of sculpting, which is what this, uh, <laughs> project is all about. Uh, the other thing that's interesting about this video is that, uh, this is probably going to be the last uh grind that i'm going to be posting for this year i was working on three grinds uh two really long illustrations and this one i was kind of helping to have all three of them by the done by the end of the year but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen which is fine because i can always post them next year and as usual i also have my speed paint so of course there's always something to look forward to uh so yeah, it's not at all together uh, completely lost cost. Um, so yeah. Um, and then the other thing that's interesting about this video is that it is divided in uh, two parts. Um, to, to quickly explain why this is. Uh, basically with 3D... Um, Okay, so when you do a time lapse of a 2D artwork, everything is just so much easier to understand because it's all in one plane. Um, and there's not a whole lot of, I mean, there's a lot of things going on when you're 2D painting, but it, again, since it's in one plane, it's just easier to understand. 3D is a little bit different, um, obviously, because there's 3D planes. <laughs> so, um, trying to uh keep track of what's going on when you're rotating objects kind of like the way i'm rotating this object right now um sometimes things go so fast with a time lapse that it's kind of hard to understand what's going on so i realized that in order for me in order for the viewer to understand what's going on i really have to slow my speed on my 3d projects um so this was a 30 hour 3d project and typically in my 30 hour uh paintings i could do a 40 speed video and things would still make sense but if i was to try a 40 speed 40 times speed video on a 30 hour 3d project it's just it, it's just not going to make sense so it's always just better to just slow it down to like 20 or 17 um and then just post multiple parts to it so yeah yay two part video woohoo do catch the second part i'm gonna upload the second part the same time same time i upload the first part so there's like really no need to wait for the second part and whatnot yay that's awesome right <laughs> a lesson all in one go so but anyways yeah so uh <laughs> enough about uh talking about what's going on in my channel and all the updates and what's so special about this one um i guess what's really very important about um this video and what we really need to be talking about is what's going on in the screen because yeah <laughs> i really need to be talking about the art process so to quickly recap what is going on in the screen obviously i have blender my 3d um program of choice for sculpting I do have ZBrush, uh, and for the longest time I was working with ZBrush, but man, do I love the interface of Blender so much better. Um, I know ZBrush is such an industry standard, and I love it because it's such an amazing piece of software, but man, its UI is just so daunting. And you know, on ZBrush's events, um, Blender is actually daunting too because there's a lot of buttons in Blender. I mean, you just look at the screen right now. There's like 300 buttons to click on. It's it's very daunting, um, which is the case in 3D app applications in general. There's just so many options to to choose from. 
But when it comes to the sculpting interface, uh, it's just so much simpler and cleaner and I just absolutely love it and hence why I decided to go with Blender. Uh, it seems like such a downgrade, especially since ZBrush is such an industry standard, but well, you know, I gotta go with what works best for me and this works best for me so yeah yay blender oh man such an amazing piece of software go check it out open source free so yeah absolutely free great great software so anyways i am working on blender obviously and i'm doing another 3d uh fan art of agems um agems is such a great artist this is the second time i've done uh, a fan art of his work uh do check him out uh agems draws is his instagram page and yeah he's a really kicking artist so um yeah <laughs> just check him out really good uh he did this painting i think way back for may and I know he did it around Mermaid. Uh, but I can't remember for the life of me if he did it for Mermaid of 2018 or Mermaid of 2019. So I'm not sure when this particular artwork was done. I just really, really like it. And I thought it was really cute. And I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to have to, yeah, <laughs> make a sculpt out of it, which is what I'm doing now. So, um, so that's really what the basis of my project is. It's just a study of one of Agent's work, which is really, really good. So um, in Blender, uh, well, yeah, I'm supposed to be talking about the process, but I haven't talked about the process. So seven minutes has uh, gone by in the video, which at this point, this is probably about two to three hours worth of work and maybe even five. I'm not even sure. But to quickly talk about like what has transpired so far, um, the way I normally start out my sculpts is that I start out with a primitive object, which is pretty much what everyone starts out with, you know, uh, standard square, sometimes circle. For some people, uh, I couldn't remember what I started out with because I was talking so much. I forgot what I started out with. But if I'm not wrong, I probably started with um, a simple blocked out square. Now I'm like tempted to rewind, but I don't want to because I need to be watching this real time so that my commentary is real time. Anyways, point is I started with a primitive object, which is what most people do anyways when they're sculpting, digitally sculpting. And then obviously you push and pull, uh, move the object around until you kind of get the general gist and shape of what you're trying to achieve and then obviously you're fine from there uh, great standard process for doing sculpts any kind of sculpts always start out blocky always start out with the big shapes uh, do not get too bogged down with the details and then yeah just slowly refine from there so um so that's what I did basically with this particular project and I got to tell you, okay, um, I guess this is the part of the conversation that is, I, I really needed to go through right now in this scene, it looks like I'm working on a face and obviously this face is not quite the same as the final face. Basically what happened during this whole project is that I went through, through four faces, if I'm not wrong. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I went through four phases to get to my final product. And if I'm not wrong, the third one was like a quick experimentation. I think it was just like a 17 minute experimentation. It is part of this video, and but I think it went by so fast you could even barely tell that I did the third phase. I think it went from first phase to second phase and then all of a sudden it's the fourth phase. Um. But yeah, I have such a huge struggle with this particular project. And my biggest struggle lies in the whole uh, likeness issue, which I've written a lot about it in my blog. Um, I even have like this one blog entry about how I people shouldn't get too bogged down with... Um, Oh, <laughs> what just happened there? I just locked myself out. That was my lock screen. That was fairly unique. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted. Um, 
but basically I get bogged down with likeness because the thing with likeness is that sometimes I, I it's so easy for me and sometimes it's just immensely immensely difficult um I've talked about in my blog about how some particular people you know I it's easy for me to capture their faces like painting after painting after painting them I'm like okay yeah they look all the same while some people that I paint I just always have a trouble capturing their likeness sometimes I nail it half the time I don't and it's just maddeningly frustrating and so this is basically kind of like what I was going through with this particular project <laughs> which what is so funny about this was I was kind of picking on Ajem's artwork because I thought that they were cartoony and then in my head I was thinking well at least they're not realistic faces which means likeness would be easily captured and yet and all this stuff that is such a wrong idea to be thinking like I knew better I know better to think that because the deal is that um, cartoon faces uh, such as this one and like Disney faces um, and just anything with cartoony characters, you know, everyone seems to think that they're always easier to do versus realistic faces. And it's really not the case. I should have known this because even though, you know, I tend to lean towards the realism side. I like painting realistic faces more than cartoony faces. But I have done cartoony faces and I can tell you this much. Drawing cartoony faces is a challenge and a very, very serious art form in itself. Like I completely understand why Louis Van Barl is so popular um, she kind of like kind of does mainly like cartoony faces right and real estate faces and I understand why she's so popular is because you know to make things look cute on a daily basis is just a very difficult thing to do and that's the thing with cartoony is that you have to make them cute it's like the sellable factor if you try to enter form uh, not enter form Morphize. If you try to stylize realism, right, um, it could go awful really fast, real quick. And so, to make it, to make a stylized look, such as a cartoon look, um, good looking, you have to just be very, very good at your craft. Which obviously, in this case, Ajems is very, very good in his craft because you know all his cartoon faces is just really, really good looking. And so I was just sitting there thinking, okay, well, you know, Ajem's uh, characters aren't very realistic and they might be easier to replicate in 3D. No, that's not the case because then I'm having to deal with that whole issue of, you know, <laughs> making it look cute, which is really, really frustrating. So in the case of this first face that I did, you know, I, I, it looked good in all honesty i really like this first face you know in all honesty because i thought that i finally got the whole cuteness down but i was so frustrated because he just did not look like the girl <laughs> oh man my continuing um struggle with likeness this is always going to be a struggle and i have a feeling that it's going to be one of those things that i just need to continuously improve upon you know you win some, I lo you lose some. So, you know, in this case, in this first phase, I definitely knew they'll lose some. Um, the other thing that I didn't like about this particular first phase is that, um, is that it's wide, you know? Um, okay, so there's the first phase right now, and I really, really like that, but the likeness was just really off. And I just realized now that I think I'm doing edits. No, I'm not doing edits. Uh, wow, that uh, those eyes look different, like real fast, real quick. I, I'm not really sure what I did differently there. Look like I edited something, whatnot. Anyways, my point is like it's cute. It's so so cute. Um. But yeah, just, I mean, if you look at the bottom and you compare it to the top, it obviously just does not look like the same character. Um, so yeah, I I guess 
part of me was just kind of just going for the cute look and the cute factor that I didn't really think about the likeness as much and so yeah I, I'm not really sure what my train of thought was um, at this point but the one thing for sure though is that even though this face looked kind of cute um, once I added like the ears and then the, the hair I just started to not like it because it just felt like it was just too wide and I think part of the problem that I was having was um, a perspective issue like I have a feeling that I couldn't figure out what the depth of field was or the field of view of HM's drawing. I mean, it's so hard for me to explain this. Um, when you look at photographs, there's a field of view. Like you could change the camera angle, right? Uh, you could change it to like a 23. Um, you know what? I'm going to pull up Blender just so that I explain this better. Um, so hang on tight. And I think right about now is when I'm about to start the second phase. Because I think I'm about to give up on this first phase right here. Or not. I guess I'm working on the eyes. Uh, focal length. That's the term I was looking for. Man, I had to pull up Blender just to to read focal length um the focal length changes the rendering of a particular object right and i have no idea if if agent's drawing was act an actual photograph i'm not sure what the focal length of his drawing was you know and it would have a huge effect on on the modeling especially if the focal length that i sent my camera on is like different than what a Jim's photo would have been but since his is a drawing you know like I have no idea what to base my focal length on so I just left blender's default maybe this is something that I need to look upon and to do research on because now that I'm thinking it out loud and speaking it out loud I guess this would have been something that I should have prepped a little bit more better um because yeah, now I recognize it as a problem. But yeah, basically what I'm trying to get at is that in his photo and in his drawing, it doesn't look nowhere near as wide. The, the girl's face doesn't look nowhere near as wide as mine does. And I have a feeling that it has something to do with the focal length of the camera. So whether that is the case or not, I'm not sure. This is probably something I have to experiment on um, and kind of figure out because this is actually a very interesting thing to think about so yeah but anyways going back to my initial problem with the likeness i went through three phases with this um the first phase is the part where i just quit this is the second phase where i decided you know what i mainly sculpted before this time around i'm gonna try and do polygonal modeling and do the blocking of the whole character close i was gonna block the whole thing closer to the face as much as I can so as you can see I pulled up uh, HM's drawing onto the left and have it set to an orthographic point of view and basically just try to copy it HM's face as much as I can with political polygonal modeling first you know just so that I could block it out as simply as I could without having to worry so much about the sculpting um, I realized that even though that this was a very good approach, this was when I was beginning to kind of have a sense that I, I needed to figure out what the right focal length is. Because even though I set my camera into orthographic, once you start looking into it into 3D, everything just starts to look wider than it really needs to be. Um, so, you know, once I was beginning to realize that, I also discarded the second phase. And then again, like I said, I did the third phase, but the third phase was just, you know, done real quick. I don't even remember how many minutes it was on this video, but I mean, it went by real fast time wise. Like I said, I think I spent about 17 to 30 minutes on the third phase before I gave up. But basically what I ended up doing 
is that I finally contacted Agems, which I'm really grateful that Agems was able to, you know, spend some time helping me out with this project, you know, and giving me hints and whatnot on how to replicate the likeness because I was just ready to give up. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I was just so frustrated. You can ask him about my frustrations. And at one point in time, I think I frustrated Agems too because I was being such a negative Betty about the whole process. I'm like, oh, I hate my art. I couldn't nail it. So yeah, I was so frustrated. Anyways, to make a long story short, likeness is a struggle for me. And it's still a learning lesson for me. And oh, I just realized this is, is this still the second phase or the third phase? I'm not even sure. But I'm pretty sure that quickly I abandoned this idea just as well. And what I basically ended up doing is I just brought back the first face that I worked on, which was cute, but didn't look like HMs. And then I just ended up heavily modifying it. So, yeah. But, yeah, that's what you'll see me do in the next few minutes. It's just me constantly working, reworking this face, trying to see if I could capture the likeness. You can see on the left side, I finally decided to... Um, what do you call it? Uh, to not make the face as wide, to skinny the face up. <laughs> it's not a verb, skinny the face up. But I decided to make it skinnier, the face. I moved it and pushed it just so that it's not quite as wide looking. Just because, like I said, it just looks so odd in 3D. So, yeah. Wow, this was such a struggle, man. <laughs> Talk about a really long struggle. Anyways, keep watching. There's a lot of things to watch about my struggles with this face, and I'll start narrating uh, about some of the art processes later on. Perfect.
was really hoping to see the final to see me start the final phase and because that's when I really wanted to start narrating again and talking about my whole facial issue but then I totally forgot that I did this whole blocking phase um, so the whole time for the past half an hour you just saw me go through three phases basically this is at this point I think the third phase or maybe the second phase I'm not sure because again like I said the second and the third phase were kind of like both the same uh, I think at one point in time it was either it's either this is the second phase and then the third phase was like a quick deviation for this that didn't work out very well that I discarded or that the second phase was like a quick you know 30 minute experiment and then I deviated from that and then started this phase so I'm not sure which one the second and third is but you know for the sake of conversation let's just say that this is the third phase um, basically at this point I know that I was still having issues with the likeness and I kind of gave up I was just like you know what I'm just gonna move forward but then I had a change of heart and then decided that I was going to approach agents and ask him, well, hey, look, I'm doing this artwork based on your artwork. You know, maybe you can help me out. And that's when he started giving me pointers. So at some point in time, like in the next few minutes or so, I'm thinking, I, I don't know, like in a minute or two, you will see me bring back um, the first face that I was working on and then start to heavily modify it because you know ver because that first face versus this new face that I have that we're looking at if you compare those two and have it sit next to the original photo really the first one kind of has more of a similarity than this particular one so in the end I just brought back that first one and then just ended up heavily modifying that but obviously I did all of that after I did this blocking phase of the full scene you know um, obviously I deviated from HM's original photo HM's original photo is that oh there there's the first face now now I'm starting to edit this around after I talked to HM's and got a few pointers from him to help me figure out like what's wrong with this face because even though this face was the best looking out of the four faces that I've done it's just again like I said the likeness just was not there and it was just so frustrating that the likeness wasn't there and of course I wasn't really liking the whiteness of it so you know there were some issues with that so I kind of had to like move some things around and kind of edit it and so yeah I was just very very grateful that Again, like I said, agents took the time to help me out and figure out what is wrong with this face. Uh, but yeah, here I am editing that first face because, you know, it's just... I, part of me just really just wanted to nail it because the very first project that I did that was based on agents' artwork, I also failed on the likeness of that piece. Again, I was thinking that, oh, hey, this is cartoon proportions. This is stylized artwork. This is not, re you know, uber realism. This is going to be e much, much easier for me to replicate in 3D. No, don't ever, ever think that. Because stylized look is just as difficult to pull off um, as realism. In fact, sometimes I feel like realism is so much easier to pull off versus... Um, stylized look although I've never actually attempted to replicate like a, an actual person's likeness on sculpture so you know I don't know how well I would do with that maybe that is something I need to schedule as the next project for part of my personal art group but um, besides that musing uh, I guess let's go back to some of the interesting things that I did with this particular sculpt in general because I got so obsessed with the conversation of likeness that I neglected to talk about some of the processes that I employed in this particular scope that I haven't employed before which is very 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 interesting um, so one of the things that is different with this sculpt versus all my other sculpt is that instead of it just being a bust it's a full body uh, so 
typically when I've done sculpts or the sculpts that I've posted on my YouTube channel, they've all just been the head and on head from head uh, or from chest to head basically. So it's just basically like a portrait bust. I've never done a full body before. So this is completely new for me. I'm not very good at rigging. Uh, personally, I know that, you know, if I was to do a character in a production environment, for example, I would definitely, definitely pose that character in a symmetrical pose. Um, you could see me when, when I blocked out my character that I actually did not uh, use symmetry. The only point in time that I used symmetry was the face. That's it. Um, when I blocked out the body, I just decided to block it out because I knew that I was just going to have this character just be on the standard pose. Like I have no intention of animating it or whatnot. So I didn't bother putting it in a T pose or an A pose so that I could rig it later and move it onto a pose. No, I decided to just go ahead and pose it the way the final product was going to look like. Uh, maybe in the next... Um, time that I do like a, another character project I probably won't do it as much because or I probably won't do it as much I probably won't do this technique again simply just because putting a character in a t-pose um, really does help speed up the workflow because instead of having to you know model the left side and the right side you're all just doing it in one go if you have symmetry on so so yeah uh, that's one thing that I do differently. The other thing that I employed on here that I thought was kind of unique was the way I modeled the eyes. So I realized that I have a huge problem sculpting the eyelids, um, just that area around the eyes. And trying to figure out how big the eyes needed to be, I always have such huge issues with that as well. So I saw this one particular um technique on youtube and for the life of me i could not remember where i learned this from i wish i keep better notes of where i learned things from but basically on that youtube channel or on that youtube video they showed this particular uh approach and modeling the eyes where you separate it from the face um and so that's what you that's what i did um for practically all my face face attempts the second face that i worked on slash a third face second third face that i worked on and the first face that i worked on i separated the eyes from the whole head simply because um simply because i you know i just wanted to retain the shape better um and so that it's easier for me to move things around so yeah uh, so that was a cool technique that I did um, that I probably will use in, um, in some of my future character sculpts. Um, but yeah, those are some of the things that I neglected to mention that was going on in this case scene um, just because I was talking a lot about the likeness thing. Um, now going back to what's going on right now, right now I'm basically just got done with the face. I think at this point in time, the face is for the most part set. I know that I'm going to do some more edits on it based on some of Ajem's comments that I get every now and then. Um, but for the most part, I'm like laying the face to rest because it's as close as I could get likeness wise, you know, and I decided that I was just going to go ahead and move on and just slowly start working on the body. So in this particular case that we're looking at, I had decided that I was going to work on the pier because that's another thing that i did differently obviously from asian's photo asian's photo character and his his character is laying on the ground slash some plane of some sort my me on the other hand i decided to put her on a pier just because i thought that that would make a much more interesting composition so uh so that's what i'm doing right now is that i'm modeling the pier uh, doing all this little uh, sketching <laughs> on a polygonal object that I basically modeled. 
And so, yeah, uh, this was a fairly easy thing to sculpt. Um, I tried looking up references for a sculpted plank, but most of the, most of the references I could find are used like photo textures, basically. Uh, there's not quite, a, there's not a lot of references to actually hand sculpted planks. So I kind of have to like figure out and invent some of the details that I put on here. Um, the one thing that I know is that I had to vary a lot of the planks a whole lot. So that's what you're seeing me do right now. Um, it's just kind of roughing it up. Looks like it, you know, make it look like it's sweatered. And then eventually I'll just come back with more scratches on it just to kind of indicate like the, uh, the barks, the bark texture that you see on wood. Um, so yeah, it was a fairly easy thing to sculpt. And then whatever I did on the pier, I did, uh, the same thing on the post as well. And then after that, I think I, uh, work some more on the face. I'm not sure. Um, I think I might have started working on the hat. Um, but yeah, basically the way I set the character up is that, you know, or the way I set up the whole scene is that I had the pier and the post all in one, um, in one collection. And then I had the mermaid in another collection and then the mermaids all divided into, different parts there's the eyes the face the head and then the hat uh, which the hat is divided into like the hat symbol um the little navy symbol that's uh in the insignia on the hat i had to model that separately and then obviously the hat the right and the left arm is so interesting to sculpt <laughs> especially the hands because since i didn't do it symmetrically since i decided that i was going to post I was going to sculpt the right arm and left arm separately from each other. They ended up looking <laughs> very, very unique from each other. It's not very noticeable, but if you put the hands, especially if you put the hands together right next to each other, you could tell that I used, you could tell that I used two different references to model the hand. Um, so yeah, I thought it was interesting. But yeah, so the arms are separated from everything else. The blouse is separated from the skirt. And then the tail is obviously separated from everything else. And uh, so yeah. Here I am working on the post. And after that, I'll just slowly uh, start working on those little separate pieces that I set up uh, for me to sculpt.
So this first part of the um, video is uh, it's almost over. So I guess I just wanted to quickly recap what has happened so far. So basically in the first 30 minutes I modeled four different faces. One of which is missing from the video or is not shown very well in the video because again like I said um, it was done in half an hour and it was like a modification of like one of the faces that I was experimenting with. So, um, but yeah, it was four different faces, four different versions of the face. Uh, and oh, hey, look, this HM's draw paint over <laughs> of my of my work. So, the one on the top right, uh, that's HM's paint over of my sculpt, uh, just to try and you know get. It's basically his critique of what I've done so far. So I was trying to copy what his paint over is just so that I could get closer to the look of his uh, original character, obviously. But anyways, yeah, so I worked in four different faces and obviously I'm still editing the fourth face just so that I could get as close as I can uh, to Ajim's character. Uh, make her look more like Ajem's character. Um, I also did a non-symmetrical modeling, which is not very, very standard at all. Uh, most people do symmetrical modeling simply because it does save them time. Uh, me on the other hand, I didn't want to be bothered with rigging because I'm not very good at it. So I decided to just block things out um, just to block her body out and just to for me to individually just uh, model them separately it worked very great for my final um, product because again like my final product was just going to be a pose and non-animated so i mean it worked fine but again you know as for a warning it's always better to model things symmetrically so um, so far, that's all you've seen me do so far is just to block out the full scene after struggling with three different faces, man. Oh, this is such a struggle. This is like a year's worth of frustration right here, man. Just continuously working on this. I'm just trying to get it as close to Ajem's character as much as possible. So yeah. But anyways, this is the end of the first video. Do check out the second video. I will talk some more about this project. In that second video, I will see you guys then. Good night.